Hello, welcome back everybody. It is Rob here with another tutorial uh, and today we are going to be doing a Emperor's Spear uh, Primaris Marine. So I don't often do Primaris so um, I thought I'd do something special for this which is uh, to create one of the Emperor's Spears uh, using a number of uh, 3D uh, printed bits. I will put where I got the 3D printed bits in the links below. Um, and uh, a special thank you to the Army Painter for sponsoring this video and making it possible as well. Uh, I absolutely love the Emperor Spears. Uh, Aaron Dempsey Bowden did a excellent job with his rendition of the chapter in the Spears of the Emperor. If you've not, um, or in the book Spears of the Emperor. So if you haven't uh, read it before, definitely worth checking out that book. They're absolutely awesome, very savage. Um, but a noble uh, chapter nonetheless. And I thought that kind of a spear and shield combo would be pretty cool. Uh, so we're going to start with a grey primer. We want to create a cobalt blue, I guess. Um, so we're going to start with a grey primer on this one. Um, just because we want to still maintain vibrancy within the colour. But also because it was just the closest... Uh, primer that I had to hand so I didn't really think about it too much but um, yeah I think a grey is always a good way to start uh, a blue rather than a blacker so uh, crystal blue so as I said I wanted a cobalt colour I did look online um, to see what other people had done I had um, you know I had a look at the artwork that we have as well and essentially it's a cobalt so uh, it's slightly more vivid than typically ultramarine armour might be um, but I, for my own ultramarines for 30k, I tend to do them in a similar sort of colour to this anyway. So it wasn't something that, you know, I was used to doing it in in kind of this kind of colour. What I would say is if you haven't got an airbrush, you could just do this cobalt blue, this vivid blue with a, um, you know, w with a hairy brush. And you don't need to do the next step. I've tried to keep the steps that I do down to a minimum. Um, and actually, by the end, you couldn't really tell that I'd use the airbrush, to be honest. Like, you know, by the time we use oils and things like that. So if you don't have an airbrush, you can just do this by hand. So we're going to move on uh, to Imperial Navy now. So again, this is within the kind of like the tints, uh, the triads, that the Army Painter call it, um, or the flexible triads. Uh, that they've created and this one's quite dark I thinned it with quite a lot of thinner um, and what you can see me doing here is I'm just spraying it into the shadows just to render the shapes uh, the Primaris are actually great for you know for the shapes on them they're quite relatively quite simple kind of cylinders um, and spheres and things like that so it, you know if you've got an airbrush you're going to want to render them and I often find starting from a light color and then shading it uh, rather than say starting from a dark color and then highlighting it I just find that it's generally more successful I you tend to keep a lot of the you know the vibrancy of the color um, and that's always how I would tend to do say reds and yellows I would start as bright as I can go and then shade down as you can see, you can just build up the shade, that shadow, as much as you want to. Uh, but, you know, keep it thin is all I would say. You know, almost like a... It's basically a glaze consistency. Um, but it works really nicely with the crystal blue that um, that I use. So we're going to go to Runic Cobalt, uh, which is a really nice um, off-blue white you know, blue gray essentially, um, and it tends to be at the moment. Although I go through phases, it tends to be the shade color that I'm doing for most of the whites at the moment. Um, so if you saw my Raven Guard video, uh, I used um, I used this color uh, to be able to um, to be able to do the whites and then all we're going to do is just highlight that with uh with some white as well with some matte white and again this is just mixed with a little bit of thinner i didn't have any problems putting it through the airbrush uh, and because all these colors are super opaque um they're really quite highly pigmented you know you need two or three thin coats of this white and it's built up into a proper crisp uh crisp white 
Um, so I'd really recommend if you're looking at just buying a couple of these Fanatic paints, I think if and you're looking how to do white, I think these two make a good combination. And you've just got a nice subtle shadow uh, with a highlight as well. So we're going to go on to Arctic Gem. So Arctic Gem is the natural step up. In fact, it is the next step up in the flexible triads from the crystal blue that we were using before. So we don't have to do this stage again. Oh, you can see here actually the the two colors and the natural progression between the two. So with the um, the edge highlights, all I, all I would say is that you don't necessarily have to do this stage. Um, and if you're into Horus Heresy um, or you know grim dark painting or something like that, then you know you might be somebody who just skips edge highlights. You can render shapes in different ways, including with battle damage. Um, but I again, I just want to show you guys what these like the natural step ups in terms of the paints and the flexible triads um, and kind of doing the edge highlighting like this um, gives me a chance to do that. So this is edge highlighted with just Arctic blue and I use matte white um, to um, edge highlight the helmet. So let's talk about transfer. So I got a transfer sheet, an Emperor's Spears transfer sheet. I will put where I got it from in the links below i didn't think this transfer sheet was very good um so i don't mind cutting out the transfers that wasn't an issue at all um but um basically when i took it off and when i laid it down on the blue armor uh you could see like white lines like where the the transfer has missed the backing slightly sometimes it happens with games workshop transfer sheets but very very rarely um, but it makes it super unsightly so and i tried a couple you can see here that i had two of the same to just see if it was a one-off issue but actually it, it happened on all of the transfer transfers that i used um, where you just got this like horrible white line where it's kind of misprinted or just slightly out of alignment you can correct it and i did correct it by um painting kind of like black onto those white parts um but it's just unsightly and just takes time getting rid of it so i wouldn't recommend these but the problem is finding empress georgian transfer sheets i think it's always a little bit a little bit tricky but i will put the link in the description below and i'll probably also speak to the company that made them as well and just let them know that that was my experience um so I've gloss varnished the model and then I'm using micro set and micro sole. I've done lots of videos um, before about applying transfers. In fact, I've done a whole transfer video. So if you're kind of want to know more about how to do transfers correctly, um, then um, or the way I do them rather then um, you can go watch that uh, video. It is very in depth and takes you through every step of the process as well. Um, but I'd always recommend putting transfers over a gloss varnish. Um, I just think it's better that way. Uh, so we are going to go back to our crystal blue now. So this is an Arctic, uh, Arctic gem. This is crystal blue. Um, and obviously this matches the armor color that we airbrushed down. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to sponge this over the transfers when they're all set and they're, um, nicely smooth over that armor. Um, and what this does is just create the impression that it's not a sticker placed onto the model at the end and after all the battle damage. Uh, it's actually you know painted on and then scratched away. Um, we want to make it look realistic and you know set into the background of our our miniature. Uh, so I'm using leather brown or bootstrap brown. I can't remember which one. And then black here. Um, but any any brown will do um, leather brown and bootstrap brown I tend I use for this project uh, just to try them out and I thought they were both great so either one will do mix it with a little bit of black and then we're just going to sponge on um, uh, a little bit of battle damage here and there um, just remember to get most of the paint off of your sponge this is just a kitchen sponge you know the like two pound for five of them right and they'll last you ages um, I just really like the way that kitchen sponge uh, you know goes down i wouldn't tend to use like a natural sponge or anything like that um i think these are top notch uh so we're going to use some uh, oil paints now so if you've seen any of my previous videos you won't be a stranger to this process uh i've gloss varnished the model again to protect everything and i it also protects the transfers and all the battle damage as well 
And then I'm just using a mix of uh, Lamp Black and Burnt Umber by Winsor & Newton and then mixed it with a little bit of Odeless White Spirit. And as you can see, I'm going around and I'm panel lining the model. Now you could buy, you know, all sorts of um, uh, products that do similar. I just tend to use oil paints, but there are lots of products uh, like this on the market already, you know, spe specific panel liners by companies. But also, if you're not familiar with this process uh, or don't feel comfortable with it, uh, you could always use something like Dark Tone uh, from the Army Painter as well, just to kind of like panel line it. But I think it's important that you do panel line it in some way, shape or form, um, just to render render the shapes of the model um, and just add some depth to the model as well. And I've used the same mix on the helmet, but I've just been super careful with the helmet because obviously it is white. So just try and be as precise as you can. And then you can see here it has been matted down um, and then this is the color that our armor is going to be. So we still needed to have some vibrancy, which is why I started with such a you know a vivid bright blue with that crystal blue. Um, because uh, you know, I knew that I'd be adding oils. I knew that I'd be matting it down. I knew that there would be um, battle damage over it as well. So uh, I'm going to show you some, you know, elements on this model. Not every single one, but some elements. So the eagle, runic cobalt. We're going to keep within the blue tones on the um, on the eagle. I did kind of think about maybe using bone colors um but actually looking at the artwork i felt like a blue a gray blue was probably better so it just fits with everything we've done so far so runic cobalt first then the next is uh frost blue i think it was frost blue and then we just you know highlight um highlight over the runic cobalt from there and then we just you know if we're probably doing this highlight about 80% of the eagle on the front. Um, you know, there's nothing special about this. You just need a, a sharp brush and to be quite precise. And then we're going to use matte white just to pick out those final uh, final parts. So no washes on this part. We just use three colors and just build it up bit by bit. Um, and then the matte white goes down really nicely. Um, and you know, just pick out the you know, the the eagle wings and the um, the the top of the the actual body of the eagle as well. Um, you know, this is an important part of the model. You know, the the attention of the person looking at the model will look at the head first, and then you know they'll tend to look around the eagle next because it's so big and bright and white. They'll look at that next. So it's important that we spend a bit of time getting this bit right. Uh, so while you're doing the white, though, what I'd recommend is doing all the soft armor joints, and then uh, once that has dried, those white elements, you can then go in with grim black speed paint and just paint over it, and then they're highlighted grey, um, which is a really quick, easy way. Uh, to do soft armor joints so bootstrap brown and then matte black so i've taken you through quite a lot of this there's actually quite a lot of um footage of this part so we mix the two paints together in about a 50 50 mix um, and then we're just going to lay down our kind of this leather color there's always loads of ways to do leather i've kind of spoken to you guys about how to do leather and shown you how to do leather previously this is just another way uh so we're going to go with straight up bootstrap brown now uh but we're probably highlighting about 80 percent um of the the leather elements you can see here i'm not doing the kind of like the darkest parts just the bit where it's highlighted and actually the gw sculpts the leather paturges are often really nice to paint actually like they're sculpted in a way that um they're really really nice to paint so leather becomes less of a less of a chore um and you can get some sick fades on the on the leather as well so as i say just going in with bootstrap uh brown here and then just um yeah giving it a highlight of about 80 percent, and then going in with leather brown which is the you know the kind of the next step up in the um in the flexible triad and then probably highlighting about 40%. And I hear you can see me being a little bit scratchier, just trying to create kind of a leather effect here. Um, and then, you know, you can start to do some edge highlights with those as well. And if you want to highlight further, you can mix in an off-white, a skeleton bone color, mix that in um, into the leather brown, and then do some further edge highlights and little scratches 
uh, if you want to as well. Um, and then you can see that I'm also glazing into the shadows with that original black brown mix that we used as well. But as I say, the leather on GW sculpts are really, really nice to uh, really nice paint. Right, so onto the metallic. So rough iron and greedy gold mixed together. So the greedy gold is a punchy gold, really, you know, quite yellow in its tone. Um, but as a base to lay down, you know, I think that we want it a little bit darker for what we need, but we will eventually go up to greedy gold and then even brighter than that. In fact, we'll go to bright gold as well. So this mix of greedy gold and rough iron is a really nice colored, I guess like brass color. Um, so, you know, I would just use this on a lot of projects. And actually I think there's an argument for just using this color on um, Empress Spears actually, but I want to show you kind of the full gamut of some of the metallics. So we're going to use greedy gold here, and then we're going to do some rough highlights with the greedy gold. Now, you guys, if you've seen me do metallics before, at these initial stages, I'm always quite rough with them. You know, it's you don't want two pristine metals uh, and, you know, super nicely highlighted metals that are really pristine and then armor that's totally battered uh, because it's not going to, you know, look quite right. So, you know, you can afford to be a little bit rougher with these metallics earlier on. We will do some edge highlights a little bit later um, just to render the shapes of the, you know, the metallic elements. But as I say, you can afford to be a little bit rough with them. Um, with, with these highlights right we're going to use a wash now so light tone purple tone so i just use equal amounts 50 50 i think you use six drops and six drops of each one uh if the army painter is watching uh this is definitely my go-to mix if they want to create a meadows mix then this is a, of a new wash this is definitely the one that i recommend so this is really good for golds because it's got purple it's a purple brown color uh, and obviously the purple contrasts against the yellow in the gold. So whenever you're doing gold, I'd always recommend, you know, rather than just doing like a brown wash, I'd always recommend adding a little bit of purple in. I've also added in a little bit of gloss varnish just to help the flow and just to maintain the luster of the golds as well. One of the things about using all kinds of washes is that they can have a bit of a matte effect on the metallics, which is absolutely fine if you want a matte down shadows and that looks absolutely fine but i want the metallics to still have some loss luster so i just added a little bit of gloss varnish in just to make sure it doesn't mat it down um and you know uh, two drops of uh yeah two drops of matte varnish sorry gloss varnish into into this mix here and then you can see me here just going around the entire model. Now, I think once it had dried, once I'd gone around the entire model, I then went back and gave it a second coat. And I, it was quite a precision wash, this one. You know, I mainly focused um, into the shadows, almost using it as a glaze um, after I'd done that initial wash all over the metallics. And particularly the shield and the shadows of the shield, you can see where the kind of the purple is more obviously uh, built up. And then we're going to use bright gold as our our edge highlight, basically. So as I say, you wanna you do want to render uh, the gold elements, um, and you do want some edge highlights uh, to match what, with what we've done already. Uh, so a little bit of precision here, and then just picking out some of the most prominent kind of edges. So the obvious one, of course, is the shield is such an obvious place for people to look at. So it makes sense just to edge highlight all the way around that you could probably leave everything else though but the shield is the bit that people look at most right dragon red pure red blood chalice these are my go-to reds at the moment uh, when painting you know you want to kind of kind of like a normal red these are classed as cool reds um their warmer reds are more orangey in tone uh, whereas I would describe these as more kind of like traditional colored reds. Uh, they go down really well and this was just one coat. So this is actually, this is that first red uh, mixed in. This is dragon red mixed in with a little bit of brown. Um, I think it was uh, bootstrap brown, which we've been using an awful, awful lot. Um, and yeah, I'm just using this as the as the base color, basically. Um, so just adding in another another tone of the reds. Um, but yeah, this just makes a really, really lovely tone. And you can see kind of the color of it when it's dried here. And then what I would do is I'd go and use dragon red and I would just do some highlights here. Now, 
I would thin the dragon red down with water, pick a direction from where the light is coming from, and then do and then paint the cape. That's the that's the you know from that direction. That's always I think the easiest way to go about painting uh, capes. Just pick a direction and highlight in that direction. So you've got kind of highlights and highlights and then quite dramatic shadows as well. Um, but as I say, dragon red is a really really nice red. And then once we've used dragon red, then we are going to go straight to uh, pure red. There isn't a massive jump between those two. It's quite a subtle jump, but it's perfect for capes and things like that, where we want the transitions to be nice and smooth. So as I say, with your pure red, do your highlights. And, you know, you're working in smaller and smaller bands of light. Uh, to what you're working in before and if you feel that you need to you know if the transition's too much or the jump is too steep uh, then you can just make a mix between the pure red and the dragon red and, and hit that with the mid tone and then finally we're going to go in with blood chalice and then just see some edge highlights with blood chalice as you can see though you know these are quite cool reds um, in the sense that they are on the cooler side of the um color wheel rather than that they are cool i mean technically they are cool types of reds and then i did the uh, eye lenses but i also did the um kind of the plume at the top in exactly the same way as i did the reds i just did it all at the same time and i come back to the eye lenses later later on i'd very i just pinned the head but um so take it out uh so we're going to use some of the sand from the army painter from their basic basing kit um, and then I washed that after it was dry with that light uh, wash that we use when we're doing the metallics then I'm just sprinkling on some weathering powders I just had some left over from a previous project um, and just smushing that into the base uh, because it's going into sand I wasn't too worried at all about um, kind of losing the weathering powder you know it will it, it will stay there uh, and then we're going to use some Highland Tufts from the Army Painter which are fairly neutral you know you could use these on most landscapes or most bases and, and they would still look good um, and all you do is just take a little bit of super glue they are sticky on the bottom but I always take a little bit of super glue because it's just so easy for these things to to fall off take a little bit of super glue and then um, with a pair of tweezers uh, stick it on the bottom and then just dot them around the base and you know use a variety medium size and small ones on uh, bases uh, 32 mil bases and 40 mil bases as uh, as well you know you could put a few skulls here and there if you really wanted to and then this is our finished model I haven't done absolutely everything uh, or haven't shown you guys absolutely everything but really the broad elements the main elements of this model I've shown you I hope that you've liked it I hope you like my rendition of the Emperor Spears there's not too many Emperor Spears on uh, YouTube so if you are looking for some inspiration um, hopefully this can uh, can be that if you have got to the end of the video uh, I'd love for you to subscribe um, and I'd love for you to leave a comment and like the video, etc, etc, etc. You know the drill by now. You, you know what content creators uh, want you guys to do, so I won't bang on about it. But I do hope this was useful. I do hope this has inspired you to make and paint some Empress children and I shall see you in the next video. Take care, guys. See you soon.